didn't see you there. I was just doing my daily power posing routine. So today we're talking about power posing because you know what always does really well on YouTube? A little bit of drama. And in the world of behavioral science, which is what this channel is all about, it really doesn't get more dramatic than the story of power posing. So let's talk about it. Okay, so what actually is power posing? So in 2010, Amy Cuddy, Dana Carney, and this other guy called Andy Yap, but he's not really important for the story, these three people publish a paper about power posing. And the way the procedure works is they get a bunch of participants to adopt these different poses. And then what they claimed is that after adopting these poses for just two minutes, that they were able to measure significant significant differences in their levels of testosterone, in their levels of cortisol, and also their tolerance for risk. Specifically, they saw that the people who were assigned to adopt these power poses saw an increase in testosterone, a decrease in cortisol, and were more risk-taking. All things that you associate with having more power. Now, there are a few different power poses that you can try and that Amy Cuddy suggested. Here are a few of my favorites. Firstly, you have the Superman, you have the Wonder Woman, you have the Usain Bolt, you have the Oprah, so those are just some of my favorites. Now, when this paper was first published, it got a little bit of media attention, but when power posing really hit the stratosphere was two years later when Amy Cuddy gave this TED talk called Your Body Language May Shape Who You Are. At the time of making this video, this TED talk has 20 million views on YouTube and 62 million views on TED.com. 82 million views in total. That is a ridiculous number of views. That's like Mr. Beast level views on what is an academic talk. So why do I think that this TED talk just resonated with so many people? Well, I think it's just because it was a really easy sell, right? It's this idea that you can just do these simple power poses for just a couple minutes every time that you're about to go into a big meeting or a job interview, and suddenly you're able to completely change the trajectory of your life. And the other reason why I think this TED talk did so well is that Amy Cuddy beautifully tied this finding of power posing to this idea of overcoming imposter syndrome. She told this really heart-wrenching story about her own life, about how she never felt like she fit in, and then she talked about how later on she helped one of her students overcome the same feelings. And basically she was like, yeah, don't worry. She was like, you know, if you suffer from imposter syndrome, it's okay, man. You don't have to feel like you fit in. You're just gonna fake it till you make it. Just power pose your way all the way. Don't worry, we got this together. <laughs> And you know, a lot of people suffer from imposter syndrome, myself included, and so it was just kind of a message that a lot of people got on board on, including myself at the time when I first watched this back in high school. And for a lot of people, that's as much of the story as they know. They watch this TED talk by Amy Cuddy and they take what they heard from this lady to be absolute truth. But that's not the end of the story. You see, in science, just publishing a paper on its own doesn't make your findings concrete, robust, or true. Instead, it's up to the scientific community to review your work and most importantly, attempt something called replication. Replication means that if another scientist takes your experiment and conducts it themselves, then they should get the same results as you. And if they get the same results as you, then your study passes the replication test, which means that most likely it works and it's true. And while with any kind of academic work that receives a lot of public attention, it gets put up against a lot of academic scrutiny as well. A lot of people try to replicate Amy Cuddy's findings on power posing, and well, it just doesn't replicate. The part of the experiment that really doesn't replicate is the effects on testosterone and cortisol, the physiological hormonal changes that come with power posing. The biggest criticism of power posing came from Simonson and Simmons in 2016, who concluded that the current body of research fails to suggest the existence of an effect once we account for selective reporting. In other words, power posing doesn't work. And this wasn't the only paper that said that power posing didn't work. In a 2016 paper by Garrison et al, he took a very large sample size and did a bunch of power posing studies with them and found that actually giving people an expansive power pose actually reduced their feelings of power. And these kind of failed replication attempts just keep on coming. Few papers in 2016, few papers in 2017, it just doesn't seem to replicate well. Now all of these failed replication attempts obviously caught the attention of the original researchers that we talked about earlier, Dana Carney and Amy Cuddy. So much so in fact that Dana Carney came out with a public statement saying, I do not believe that power pose effects are real. The evidence against the existence of power poses is undeniable. And this is where I actually made a mistake in this video, which is currently my second most viewed video on this channel. I said that Amy Cuddy said that she no longer believes in power posing. That's actually not correct. And thank you to the people in the comments who pointed that out to me. It's actually her collaborator, Dana Carney, who's also an original researcher of power posing, who said that she no longer believes in power posing. And before we get to talking about what Amy Amy Cuddy ended up doing, I think it's worth pointing out something that a guy called Marcus Creed said in 2019 about power posing, which is basically he said that power posing was always tested against people in high power poses versus low power poses, rather than high power poses versus 
just sort of being a normal human being and just you know, having a normal pose. This falls under the broader category of scientific issues called the medicine poison problem, which is that if you're going to try and test a medicine, you don't test it against a poison because then obviously the medicine looks really good against people who are taking a poison. Instead, you test it against baseline, which means you just test it against taking nothing at all or taking a placebo pill. So that's kind of all of the main issues with the power posing research. It doesn't replicate, has the medicine poison problem, and well, yeah, even Dana Carney herself said that she doesn't believe in it anymore. But that's that didn't stop Amy Cuddy. So in 2017, in response to all of these failed replication attempts that are coming out, Amy Cuddy and a couple other people published this other paper, which says in the title, postural feedback reveals clear evidential value for power posing effects. And basically what she said in this paper is that while maybe the effects on your hormone levels don't seem to replicate very well, people certainly do feel more powerful when they do power posing. And then in response to Amy Cuddy publishing that paper, Forbes magazine publishes this article that says power posing is back, even though it like totally wasn't back at all. It's just one paper saying that it kind of ish works. Pretty rubbish article from Forbes if you ask me. But after all of this, where does that leave us? Well, Amy Cuddy's finding that people actually feel more powerful when doing power posing, even if the hormonal stuff isn't true, that's not a totally illegitimate result. I talk a lot in this channel about how there's no real difference between perceptual reality and objective reality. So if you feel more powerful doing power posing, then yeah, go for it, you know, who am I to stop you? But when it comes to making scientific recommendations, one paper can't really offset many, many other failed replication attempts. You basically have one person and a couple of her collaborators, Amy Cuddy, who is really supporting power posing still, but you have like the majority of the community saying it doesn't work. And when it comes to giving scientific recommendations, you have to look at what the majority of the community is saying about a subject, and that's how you give a recommendation. So in summary, if you like power posing, then go for it, carry on, but don't expect it to change your whole life because it won't. And that's the end of today's video. All right, thanks for watching, bye-bye. Hey guys, so if you made it to the end of this video, I just wanna say a huge thank you. This is a very, very special video today because this marks one year of making videos here on YouTube. This is my 50 second video, which means that we have successfully made one video a week on average for a whole year. We went from zero to now over 3000 subscribers and I've got to talk to some of the most amazing people in the field. So I just wanna say a huge thank you to you for your support on the channel. Let's keep talking about behavioral science and let's see what the next year of making videos brings for us. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Tell you what though, Mum. Mm -hmm. This is quite fun. <laughs> Dressing up like Superman. Mm -hmm.